If you see, marriages are made between us and we took responsibility for who we are, how oh, we could have made it work, but the damn thing is made in heaven. <laughs> Not suitable here, it's because it's an alien stuff. <laughs> Everything is a mess because you think it's made elsewhere by somebody else. So Sadhguru, our mothers have set amazing benchmark. The moment you say mothers, yeah. they're giving a sound ambience of babies crying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. That's the halo effect, I think. Yeah. So they've set a quite a big benchmark of being an ideal wife. However, I or girls of my generation feel that we cannot be as good as wife as my mother has been or our mothers have been. So should I feel that I am falling short of my… in my personal life or should I feel that I'm not giving enough justice to my marriage once I'm married? How should I feel about this? <coughs> you know, our center in the United States is in Tennessee. Tennessee is a little one kind of state. Okay. Mary Makowski, that's not Romanian, right? Okay. Mary Makowski got married. And uh, after their honeymoon, they came home and uh, she threatened him that she's going to make a dinner all by herself. I'm sorry, she… Uh, <laughs> she said she'll make dinner for the new husband. And husband came home from work and she served the dinner and he put it in his mouth and slowly he was chewing on it and went into profound thought. Then she was very excited about this dinner and she said, the only two things my mother taught me how to cook, the meatloaf and the apple pie. Then he looked at her and said, darling, which one is this? <laughs> so, your mother, your grandmother, how they made good wives. Largely it was believed the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Uh, today your husband uh, will call uh, Uber Eats and uh, <laughs> whatever quick picks and this and that and swiggies and whatever, all right <laughs> So you can't make a good wife based on how your grandmother became a good wife. You can't become a good wife based on how your mother became a good wife. Situations have changed, expectations have changed. Hmm? It's not in the stomach anymore. For some it's gone up into the head, for some it's gone further south <laughs> Yes? So, you don't uh, do that. Essentially, what a husband and wife means is, because you're not geared, most people are not geared, very few people in this world are geared to make this journey a life all by themselves. They're organized enough within themselves totally. They never feel anything missing in their life because they've made themselves like that. But most people need somebody else to lean on either emotionally, psychologically, there are needs in a human being, physical needs, psychological needs, emotional needs, maybe social needs, economic needs, variety of needs. To fulfill these needs, you want to find one person that you can depend on. Because it's very difficult even to find one person who… with whom you can share everything that you have, your body, mind, emotion and works. So this is the idea, formalizing it is so that every time you get little… some little friction, you don't fall apart, so little tying up so that things don't fall apart very easily, all right? Nothing else. The biggest mistake humanity made was, they started saying marriages are made in heaven, that's why it's such a mess <laughs> What's oh, done here? If you see, marriages are made between us, and we took responsibility for who we are, how oh, we could have made it work, but the damn thing is made in heaven. <laughs> Not suitable 
here it's because it's an alien stuff <laughs> everything is a mess because you think it's made elsewhere by somebody else if you understand it's made by you for your well being to fulfill your needs and your purposes so that you can go through this journey of life with least amount of trouble and friction then you would handle it more responsibly isn't it and according to contemporary needs not how your grandmother did her marriage you can't do it that way because expectations and situations have completely altered themselves so if you hold somebody who is your friend and who is your need you must understand you are in this relationship because you need maybe the other person also needs but that's from their side as far as you are concerned you made this relationship because you need it badly isn't it if you understand and you're always grateful for this that somebody is fulfilling all your need you would handle it well you wouldn't make a misery out of it but now you think somebody else needs you then you will make a mess out of it you understand you need it well the other person also needs to understand he needs it now there is a cohesion if you think oh you need me so i'm going to exploit you no this is not about you squeezing happiness out of somebody or they squeezing happiness out of you if two happy people meet then there can be something wonderful happening between them but you are a misery and you think somebody else should be the source of your happiness well it will multiply <laughs> can i quickly add on this because i think we have we share the border and the culture <laughs> um i can relate to what she is saying so I think what she meant is that our mothers have put certain expectations and that is as men what we have seen as well growing up and that is what I think is as even younger generation we are millennials but we've seen our mothers treat our fathers in a certain way and maybe as men we also do expect that now whereas she as a woman is not yeah for me I cannot do what you want huh? <laughs> 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 and if my future husband is seeing this she is from the wrong side of the border <laughs> <laughs> well uh, see this become a habit in everybody that everything the shortcomings that we have we would like god to take it usually that's why people invented somebody up there everything that i do wrong it's god's will everything that i do right of course i did it <laughs> so the next level of passing the buck is the parents you know genetics a little boy a 8 year old boy one day came up to his dad and asked father where is all my intelligence coming from where does my intelligence come from so the father said it must be from your mother because mine is intact <laughs> <laughs> so everybody wants to pass it somewhere this is the most fundamental thing if you want to blossom as a human being this is the most fundamental thing that you understand for everything that you are and everything that you are not is fundamentally your responsibility all the things that you are all the things that you are not yet only if you see i'm responsible you will explore the full depth of possibilities that you hold otherwise i got bad genes so what can i do god is you know sitting and standing you guys are talking god you know this is happening everywhere in different ways in some cultures more some cultures less whenever something doesn't happen god's will this has to stop this is my fundamental mission religion to responsibility only when every human being sees for all the damn things that we are and all the things that we are not we are responsible we could become a great society a great humanity a great generation of people otherwise everything that we do of course very very proud of that whatever we could not do how convenient is it if 
that is not invisible, of course parents, next level. <laughs> no, you must understand this, whatever has come to you, whichever way it's come to you, still what you make out of it is still yours, isn't it? Hello? Whole lot of people, even if you bowl a googly, they hit a sixer, some of them, you know what I'm talking <laughs> Even if the worst ball is bowled to you, you still make much out of it if you know how to do it, isn't it? A whole lot of people, when the worst possible situations were thrown at them in their lives, they have risen into phenomenal human beings, haven't they? Yeah. Huh? You have examples, Mahatma Gandhi's, Nelson Mandela's, many, many like this all over the world at different <laughs> levels. These may be famous ones, but there are many unknown ones all over the place. Isn't it so? In every society, there are many, many men and women like this, when the worst of situations were thrown at them, the best came out of them. But others complained, others pointed fingers at somebody else, some took it upon themselves. Look at nature and see, if you throw the worst kind of filth to a flowering plant, see this is what comes out. If you throw filth, fragrance will come out. Should this not be your intelligence too? What world throws at you is not your choice. Something gets thrown at you, what you make out of it is yours, one hundred percent.